um, I don't even have an object. <laughs> 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 your, your story really resonated with me. There's, there's lots of details we need to talk about. I have African American ancestry as well, but we didn't tell anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> but so I always feel like my my word of baptism, because my father baptized me, and my it was the African blood comes through my father's line, so. I always feel like my baptism was really never that valid to me. I don't know. Let's see. Um, meeting with Marlon Jensen. That was uh, just a. Was, I, I, I still don't even have words to describe how beautiful and healing and freeing that was for me. Um, you know, the, the meeting started off a little rocky. There were some <laughs> some statements made that were a little like, wow, okay, is this where we're really going? And then finally it kind of got turned around. And, and um, as more people shared anger and their stories of hurt and betrayal and uh, confusion and you know, it just it, it just really opened up and and sharing my story and, and my you know the, everything that I went through which is all very similar to to your story uh, and trip uh, <laughs> trade sorry um, and Watching Marlon Jensen, who, whom I love, you know, just I, since I first met him years ago through the Mormon History Association, uh, because he's a church historian and the church recorder, as well as being a general authority, um, he's completely reversed the feeling in LDS archives and through the, throughout the historical community. He is insistent on complete transparency. And for that, I really honor him, because that hasn't happened within the Mormon historical community since the days of Leonard Arrington and, and then that Camelot that happened briefly. Um, and now here's Elder Jensen, you know, 10 feet away from me, listening to my story. I, uh, I, I've never heard of a general authority having an open mic session where he just said, tell me your story. I want to hear all about it and, you know, stay within reasonable limits of, you know, use proper language and stuff, but I want to hear. And people just unburdened themselves to him and he just took it all in. And, and he cried and he cried. And he apologized, you know, which, um, even though it was just personal, it was his personal apology, it was not the church. It, it was him speaking as a, a human being to other human beings. It was so meaningful to me. And then afterwards he came up to me and we had another 10 minute discussion just alone. And he cried again just to me and begged me to forgive him. How could I not? Uh, the, the Oakland State, the whole state presidency, and I just pray to be incredible, but the, uh, all three of those men are just phenomenal. I love them dearly. And I, I'm, even though I don't live anywhere near Oakland, I was so grateful that they invited me to come and participate in that that whole experience. But um, so since then, so much weight has lifted off my shoulders. And it's uh, I just so much of my anger is gone. Not all of it. Uh, I still have a really homophobic mother who just, you know, 
I, I can't talk about my life around her. And if, if I say the G word, her eyes just glaze over. <laughs> so, Come on, Mom. How, you know, you've been dealing with this for 30 years. This is not a phase I'm going through. <laughs> uh, but she just, she can't, she cannot do it. She cannot. And uh, I, at least I hope someday <laughs> she do it. But she will. I, I, you know, you seem to have a lot of faith that these people can, like her can change, but I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if it's just, yeah, anyway. Uh, but, uh, the day after Prop 8 passed, to our eternal horror and shame, um, uh, there was a, uh, in Santa Cruz at the town clock, there was a, a large candlelight vigil, and the pastor from the United Church of Christ came and spoke at that. And then he said, okay, to everybody, after this vigil is over, you're welcome to come up to our church and participate in a, in a prayer vigil, if you'd like. And, and um, I was like, oh, ooh. okay, so, and, and it, most people seem to be heading that way. It was, it's kind of a long walk from the, clock, from the clock tower to that church, but uh, everybody was heading that up there, so I went along and, and, uh, and it's thought, you know, this, this could be a good time just for some prayer and stuff. I hadn't been in a Christian church for many, many years. And uh, went into this huge, beautiful sanctuary. And the, for the next two hours, just the Spirit of God moved amongst us. It's the only way I can describe it throughout this whole meeting. And, and it too was an open mic, just come up and share your story and your grief and, and whatever. And, 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 I, and I spoke, and, and then Pastor David from the church, there's an altar in the center of the, of the, the sanctuary area. He asked everybody to gather around the altar for <coughs> prayer, and so we did. And he prayed, and he prayed. And it was just one of the most powerful, beautiful prayers so heartfelt and, and, and begging God to forgive the Christians for what they had done to the, the gay community. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then, uh, then we just started singing gently, We Shall Overcome. And then there were about 400 people gathered around this altar singing. And all of a sudden, I heard at least double that many voices singing along with us in beautiful, perfect harmony. And I went, uh, I hear angels. <laughs> and, and that was it. I, I just said to myself, I want to I wanna come to where the angels are singing. Uh, for, for the whole year before that, i have been really missing music in my life and had been sort of putting out feelers like, oh, I, want, I, need, I need more music. And um, I was like, okay, I want to go where the angels are singing. And uh, come to find out, this the, you know, this particular congregation, uh, they have a traditional liturgical service uh, in the morning, and then two hours later they have a jazz service, uh, which rocks. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> uh, it's a, a six-piece quint jazz quintet, and then a woman named Lori Rivera who has the voice of an angel, and I mean. You know, they sing U2 and Joni Mitchell and, um, and, and just rock and gospel songs. And um, it's just. So I started attending that, that service, and come to find out, this church has what they call an extravagant welcome program for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. You know? Extravagant welcome, not just welcome, but, <laughs> but extravagant welcome. And it, come to find out, they have uh, this program that's very well funded and from the national church. And um, they do, they, they march every, every year in the local gay pride parade. And then when we get to the, the park uh, where the, the 
before the festival happens. Uh, they hold a two-hour church service there at the park. Um, we have, as part of the Extravagant Welcome Program, we have a monthly barbecue for LGBT folks in our congregation. Every second Tuesday, we have for, for LGBT folks. We have theology on tap, and we go to, we visit different bars and drink beer and talk about Jesus. <laughs> and it's great, you know. I, I, when I was a Mormon, I was such I was a really intense Christian. I loved my Jesus. And I have to say that what I was doing at that point was trying to make him my lover. I, I, Jesus was, for me, the ultimate lover. You know, kind, generous, forgiving, loving, and distant. You know, I, didn't have to deal with him. I didn't have to deal with the physical reality of bodies and sex and, and all that. And so I threw myself into the arms of Jesus. Just, you know, and that, and people were all, my, my father who left the Mormon church and became a hardcore born-again Christian, he kept telling me, man, you are, you're, you're more of a Christian than I am. <laughs> and you're Mormon, I can't, you can't, you can't be Mormon and Christian, what is going on? And, um, and, but when I came out of the closet and realized that that, that is what I had been doing was just, putting all my, my desire onto the suffering body of Christ, I, I lost my faith in Jesus, you know, it just stopped. And, and I've wandered around a lot in the past 20 years. Um, and it's been really interesting coming back to Jesus and, and, and you know, I, I still don't have that perfect faith that maybe, maybe I once had, but uh, the Jesus that I, I really value and worship and, and, and hold up as an example to me today is so much more of a real Jesus than, than the, this, this sort of warped sense that I had before. And I'm, I'm so grateful to this church that, um, that I found that has this amazing, extravagant welcome program that has taken me in and loves me exactly for who I am. There's no in spite of, despite, what, you know, there's no qualifications. It's just, we want you as you are. And, and I, you know, so I challenged the, the LDS church <laughs> to start an extravagant welcome <laughs> I want to see you at New Pride, marching. I want to see every ward have its own float. <laughs> and then have sacrament meeting at the park. <laughs> and maybe not theology on tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love theology on ice cream. It's not the best. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll shut up now. Thank you very much. <laughs>